Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I have a new idea, ball bearing sand my thingy majigger. It's an idea, I think it'll work. Last time I said that it didn't work, but this time I, I, th I really think it will. All right, so briefly here's the plan. We're gonna take this piece of 5200 steel combined with these 5200 ball bearings and this powdered steel with nickel content and make a blade from all of these together in one forging process. All right, I've got a four inch piece of my 5200 steel. The next thing I need to do is create a, I need to cut a strip of this mild steel stock here so that I can create a perimeter, a rim around the outside here. And it has to equal the height or thickness of this plus two of these, which is, I don't know what, but we'll figure it out. All right, so I've got my strip of uh, mild steel here. It bends pretty easily. I need to uh, get this secured around the perimeter of this 5200 steel with it indexed right in the center, just like that. All right, so I've got our 50 to 100 steel cleaned up on the belt grinder so that we have no pickled surface or scale or anything like that. Okay, this is not working at all. This uh, steel here is just too thin. It's burning out before we even really, I, I did get it kind of welded on one spot. That's about it. And that's just not gonna work. I have a different idea. All right, here's plan B. We're gonna use more material overall for this whole thing. And this is a inch and a half, 5200 steel. And whatever you know width we have, it has to be divisible by you know, the ball bearings that are 3 16 inch thick. So if I go uh, five across, I can do, uh, that'll be 935,000. So I need a 935,000 uh, trough down the center of this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark where our little uh, steel fences are going to run. Okay, so now we can take these pieces of steel and attach them like so and create ourselves a fence. Okay, we have a thing. So this little bar stock here, it's a quarter by half inch, really too, too big for this or bigger than we need, but it's what I had that's the closest, so we're making it work. Looks kind of bulky and cumbersome. This area in here is going to be our actual um, area of interest. And the last thing we need to do is make a couple of pieces of steel that will fit slightly down inside this area. All right, we've got the thing that will do the thing. And uh, now all we have to do is kind of reclean this. 5200 steel. Now the last uh, ball bearing Damascus project I did, uh, the video on that, a lot of people mentioned, you know, cleaning the bearings off. I guess from a lot of different manufacturers or suppliers, they can come with some kind of oil or anti-rust compound. Uh, these, the ones I got, the quarter inch ones as well, 
they're they're clean and dry. Uh, I didn't see or detect any kind of substance on them whatsoever, and I didn't clean them. And the uh, you know the project turned out just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and clean these in acetone just for you know uh, research sake, if you will, just to see if there's any kind of difference whatsoever in this particular case, and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, let's start adding some bearings. I've got that cleaned off that surface of the 52100. So let's see how closely we got this uh, measured for actually matching the bearing diameter for a consistent even matrix here. This is a uh, this is quite a bit of prep here, but I don't know I don't know of another way exactly to do this same thing here. I'm sure there is. I haven't figured it out yet. Okay, I had to dump it out and start over because um, if they're if the bearings are like off slightly, they have to you know they have to shift over and they're caught on the lower lower layer so it's uh, they don't they don't move over it's kind of interesting all right there we go that's that's pretty good yeah Okay, first side of our capsule thingy-majigger all sealed up. Now it's time to repeat that process on this side. So I've got one side of this cut off, and I don't really know how far to go because I'm not sure what our, our current width is on our good steel that we want to keep. And I don't see, I should see a separation there uh, with uh, that stainless steel foil I put in there where it hasn't welded. It should not have welded together. So I'm going to dip it in some ferric chloride real quick and see if that reveals anything for us. Well, there's good and bad news. Um, we have a 
solid looking weld. Bad news is I'm not seeing the uh, stainless steel foil we put in there yet, so I don't know if we're just kind of squished out. I don't know. I'm not sure where it's at. I'm going to cut this side off here and then I'm going to grind, start grinding down to see where we're at here. Alright, so we've got our can off. I dipped it in the ferric chloride here and I ground a little further into the billet on this side than I did this side, as you can see, a little bit bigger um, shapes here. It's looking really good so far. I need to go ahead and heat this up and flatten it out. All right guys, we have our billet forged down to a little over an eighth of an inch thick. Got the tang forged out here for hidden tang. That way we can use as much of our hard-earned steel for the blade and, and show off that pattern. I, I have an idea for what I'm gonna make blade-wise with this. I'm not gonna tell you yet because that's gonna be part two, but you'll notice that I kind of widened it out uh, as well as forging it lengthwise. And that's so that I could, I wanted to try and maintain some measure of uh, roundness, if you will, to, to that to the ball bearings that you're going to see instead of just making them completely stretched out. So that's the purpose for that, and the blade design I have in mind is going to be great with that. But I still don't know what it looks like, and I'm not really sure exactly how it turned out. So let me uh, grind this scale off, and we'll dip it in some ferric chloride and see what exactly we have here. Okay, I didn't take too much off. I want to leave as much material on as possible so that when we normalize and thermocycle, we can uh, have a good layer to grind off for decarb. But I cleaned it up so we can kind of see what's going on, hopefully. And then I cleaned up this edge where I'm gonna go with the, uh, probably use that for the edge of the blade, kind of see where our center 52100 steel is sitting. So let's check it out. <laughs> All right. Now that's actually, I'm pretty happy with that. And you know, you don't see everything there because I didn't take it down very far, but those look pretty round still, not just elongated, which is what I was hoping for. So that's, that's really encouraging. And look at this here, our, our 52100 down the center, looking really good. And that's pretty cool to see that uh, bright nickel content, you know, in between there. So that's really good. I'm, I'm happy. So. I expect that when we grind the blade that we're going to have, you know, graduated sizes of circles and that's going to change the shape a little bit as well with that angle, but that should be pretty cool. All right guys, well thanks for coming along on this project. I'm really happy with how it's turned out so far and I can't wait to make a blade out of it and uh, show you guys that as well. So stay tuned for that. Leave a comment below how you might modify this technique, um, how you might create a pattern like that. Um, I have a couple of different ideas that could work too, but I kind of hear I want I want to hear what you guys have to say too. So anyway, appreciate you guys watching, and we will see you on the next video.